Second by Cassie, and I have got it on my screen, so I got it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carry. Okay, first up is real property. Hey, Brian. Hi, everyone. I have um, a resolution to write off, um, to cancel interest and penalties on a property in the town of Fort Edward uh, that was um, state-owned property that needs to have the, the penalties and interest written off. That's resolution A in your packet. Motion on that. I got Mr. Griffith and uh, David O'Brien second. Yeah, Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Very. Okay. And then on the back of that sheet, you'll see the equalization table that's been finalized. All the um, town values are up to date. Everybody should have received their original um, taxable values. And if they've been revised, you would have received a revised copy since uh, based on either small claims, um, Article 7, or um, third meeting of the Board of Assessment Review in your town. So everybody should have received their town uh, numbers. And this is the uh, the total equalization table that's based off all the numbers for taxing purposes for 2022 town and county tax bills. Excellent. Thank you. And Treasurer. That, oh. Do you have something else for us? Nope, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Treasurer. Good morning, everyone. Have a busy morning, so I won't take a lot of your time. Uh, the first page in your packet, as always, is the sales tax. We enjoyed a little bit of an increase, again, in this flat deposit. Uh, right now, if we stay flat for the rest of the year, we're looking at coming in around 25.6, if my math is right. Uh, so that's, that's the best update they have for you there. And that's if we stay flat, which is to be, um, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of speculation out there on what the fourth quarter is going to look like. And <laughs> if you've got answers for me, i got a couple horses I want to talk to you about. <laughs> but right now it is what it is. And like I said, even flat right now puts us at 25.6. Uh, so that's what we're looking at on the sales tax. The only other thing that's of interest in the packet, uh, again, not to, to labor any of your time this morning. The gaming deposit came in this week and I put in the packet a copy of the email that I received because we got two deposits. And uh, the email goes through and explains how there was some additional monies that were recovered. And uh, so not only did we get a regular deposit, but we got a deposit of some monies that should have been dispersed. And that's all explained in the packet. So. I just want to make sure that you had that information and uh, and explain why there was two deposits instead of one this time. So that's that's there for your reference. And um, as far as the uh, you know your your budget to revenue report, all you know all signs are green still right now. Our expenses are going to come in under budget. Our revenues are going to come in over budget. Um, so that's you know, that's that's good as far as we sit today. We're looking at best. Best guess, probably going to go up. <laughs> My best guess right now is upwards of $5 million. That's what I think that we're going to contribute back to fund balance in 2021. We're going to be about a million dollars under on expenses and at least $4 million over in revenues. So net cost-wise, I think we're going to probably go from 12 to 17 to 12 to 17.5 at our, at our unappropriate fund balance. So. Uh, because you had some serious discussions ahead of you today, I thought that information was important to share with you as well. Very good. Okay. Now, sir. So you, you, you expect us to be roughly five over is what you just said? I think we're going to grow fund balance by five million, best, best guess. And we're looking to be over 4.6 in sales tax revenue. Most, most of the revenue, is most of the five million is going to be driven from the sales tax. Okay. Right. Yep. And we've, we've got, a, we still got some, our, what quote unquote normal breakage in point ones that's a little bit under a million dollars best guess right now. So just those two big ticket items is gonna put you at least five million. And there's some other there's some other lines that that five might be a conservative number. Right. Um, but I, I wanted to get something out for you today because you know, you've got some significant conversations coming up in the next few minutes. So Alice, this came to fruition would 
we'd be able to not borrow the $5 million in DPW and cash flow that instead of paying interest on that? Because we usually borrow $5 million. Right? Am I right? We've, we've already started paying that money back. And yes. Now with with um, Shushan and Church Street Bridges in action, I would be hesitant to give any too much of that money back right now. Okay. The Marshelli money is not flowing. They are extremely far behind on Marshelli money. And that will probably catch up with the transportation bill, I assume. Uh, but, I, but so we're still a year away from probably being able to do that. I guess that's what I, I was trying to I say. think that this March renewal, unfortunately, is going to have to be renewed. To March of 2023, I'd like to have a different conversation with okay. you. Okay. Um, that's, that's what I was trying to get the time frame. That, that, that is going to be completely triggered, though, by the Marshelli money. Because as long as we have to pay the bill and then wait for reimbursement, we're, we don't have a choice. Right. So until the Marshelli money starts flowing. So as much as we have good news, we still have things that are lagging that are a problem. Right. It's not time to let our guard down wow. by any means. Okay. Yeah, I was just, I was in hopes that, I mean, because any money wasted on borrowing money that it's, we it's got. All good, it's all good problem. news, but it's not time to take our foot off the brick, off the gas. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, okay. You know, proceed with caution still, in my opinion. Yep. Mr. Hicks? So, that, when you said it's going to trend towards at the end of the year, 17, 17 and a half, that's post-stimulus money coming out and going through that into capital project after all that accounting is done. Yeah, because that was that's already right done. in and right, right out. So that right, so yeah. after, after that, it's sort of net, you think that's what we're going to be? Yes. Yeah. And our, that, our, and our and money won't have any impact on our fund now. We redirected that money immediately. Yeah. And it hasn't, and the second one hasn't come yet. And right. the other thing is we still haven't had a tax sale. The second one's already, already earmarked for something else, right? There's a plan. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. No, it's very interesting. Hey, thanks so much. Was there something? Want me to, to, to go right into the next one? Yeah. Okay. So the only other thing that I have for the committee this morning directly is, uh, thankfully, the, the attorney for Fort Ann reminded me that uh, I can sign the cooperative agreement with the town of Fort Ann to collect their taxes, but the legislative body has to actually bless that action. I can sign the contract, but you would have to uh, actually allow that to, to be a thing. So there's a resolution, which is resolution, resolution B in your B. packet. Um, so we're, for those of you that, I, I think everybody is aware, but we've agreed to uh, collect the town and county taxes for 40 n They've got the retirement of their tax collector, and uh, they're not, they, um, they did away with the position. So we're going to, we already do the 40 n school, and we already do the Fort Everett school. So doing the 40 n town and county uh, isn't going to be any different than doing the 40 n school, really. So no, no additional staff required on my end. And, uh, and it's a different time frame. And it's a time where we would be doing some internal, yep. you know, maintenance type stuff. You know, that's when we take care of our records of retentions and stuff like that. So um, we can still get all that done and, and not have a real impact on my staff. Save the town money and we get a little bit of revenue from it. Uh, if, if there's a win win, this appears to be one. We'll see. <laughs> but the, the, so we've done the schools for two years and, and I have no complaints there. So. Move. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? One thing I'd ask you is if all 16 towns decide to do that, that's going to be a problem. Brian? That's why we'd have the conversation. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. Day and a half. Al, you said a little bit of revenue. Do you get revenue from the school for this? Yes, yes sir. What, what revenue do you get from the school and what revenue will you get from the town? The um, the we do, we do it per parcel, and it's about it's uh, the budget impact statement from the town shows it's three thousand nine hundred seventy two dollars. It's about the same number for Fort Ann School, and it's a little bit less for Fort Everett School because they're almost half the parcel. What is it per parcel? Uh, I'd have to look, Mr. Half. I think I, my mind my memory is it's around a dollar forty two. Thank you. But I would have to I'd have to check for you. Thank you. Very good. favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Very. Okay, next is probation, which is resolution C to uh, amend the budget for to purchase radios. Is there a motion to do that? Move. 
Moved by Jay Skelly, second by Dana Hogan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay. Now next is Public Safety Emergency Management Performance Grant, which is Resolution D. $28,000. Is there a motion for that one? Moved by James Griffith, second by James Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, resolution E is to amend the budget uh, for Capital Project 123, also with uh, public safety. Motion? No move. A second? Declaring? Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, F is IT. This was money they moved to take out of the 2022 budget. Uh, so this is to move that money so they can use it now. Is there a motion for that? James Griffith, there's a second. Cassie Fedler and Dana Hogan. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Terry. Okay, Resolution G, uh, Public Health to Recognize Early Intervention Administration Grant. One in order here. Oh, looks like we are. Uh, I need a motion. Move by Cassie Feather, second by Sue Cleary. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Terry. Resolution H is to move money to buy trucks at the end of the year, just like we did last year. So is there a motion for that? Jay Skelly, second by Kathy Fedland, Dana Hogan, John Roselle, any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, resolution I. Uh, DEC EPG grant for sewer district, I believe. In a motion. Dana Hogan, played by Jay Skelly, Kathy Fedler, General Zell. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Uh, resolution J, again uh, in the sewer district, it puts everything in one place so we don't amend it 30 times. <laughs> Thank you, Treasurer. Uh, motion to move that. Cassie Fedler, second to Clary and down Roselle. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carry. Uh, resolution K. Great. Um, this is our favorite one. Newspaper designation. Democrat needs a motion to move that. <laughs> Dana Half. <laughs> move by Cassie Fedler. <laughs> Second. <laughs> James Griffiths and Dave O'Brien. Any discussion? Go for it, Dana. Dana, come on. I'd like to hear from the Board of Elections because I think in many towns, independents are larger than either Republicans or Democrats. So why do we still do this nonsense? I know the answer Roger's gonna say is because county law set by the state says we have to. As you know, I'm trying to get some legislation to change it. But here it is again. So I like to see you say no, buck the, buck the trend, say no to the state, have two newspapers, don't have a political party, you know, it, it's crazy to have a political party newspaper. Does anybody ask the Whitehall Times if they really want to be a Democrat newspaper? Maybe they don't. <laughs> no. Vote, vote no. <laughs> okay, is there any discussion? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? No. <laughs> I think it passed. <laughs> Anybody's got a Mrs. Clary, Mrs. Clary wants to know 
Yeah. No, I'm a no. Two no's. I'm a no for the Republican paper, and I'm a no for the Democrat paper. Two no's. At least you're fair. <laughs> okay. It passed. Resolution now. Same thing with the Republican paper. Motion to pass. I have to bring this to the floor. Moved by Dave O'Brien. Second. Motion fails, no second. Yeah, second by Dana. <laughs> Any discussion? You want to go again, Dana? Or are we good? Just what I said before. <laughs> okay, all in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? No. Carried. Hey, can we have a third newspaper for in, for people that are no political party? The independent, NOP? We could, but good? the amount that we would add to the budget would be significant. It's bad enough we have two. The rates are huge right now. You have to have two. We're an 80 mile long county, very long and skinny. Yeah. You have, you have but, to have two, but, regardless but of if the, you added the third one, If you added a third one for no affiliated party, it would just cost half, you know, it would raise it 50%, the price. Well, Every time you, you advertise. Have, sometimes you have to do what's right, even if it costs you money. Well, you try to remember that later. Wouldn't it be 33%, Brian? <laughs> Brian, wouldn't it be 33%? No, because you go to two to three is fifty percent. Two plus one is half. Okay, yeah, yeah you're right. Okay. I'm sorry. I worked two, two no. number two long is fast. Sorry, Dave. You're right. Well, if you designated the NLP paper as one of the two that are already designated, oh, no, that's, that's legal. <laughs> so uh, here's where we're getting bogged down. Well, we have to every year. Right. The, the paper itself doesn't have to be Republican or Democrat. The parties choose the paper they want to choose. And the law says the fact that a paper is independent does not preclude it from being chosen. So if we're not choosing the Republican paper, we're choosing the paper the Republicans want to use to, on this organization, want to use to publish notices. And the Democrats get to, and it's chosen on the basis of, the, it says, the two major political parties in the state. And that, at this point, are Republicans and Democrats. Washington County Republican Party chooses the state of the Eagle. The members of, of this body. Of this body. The Republicans in this body. Choose the Republican but it has paper. to be approved by, because this, this body picks the official papers for which it's done. Do you have any input in this? Uh, yeah. Well, you have right now. This is your input. That's the point. Well, then, in other words, the Democrat had to make this nomination. Uh, no. Yeah. Just the if board does. The party it has to well, if they, if they object, if they would object. Well, no, because they might be in the minority. The only way you could get the Democrats to, to, and I'm only picking on the Democrats because they're in the minority. They have to make the nomination for it to carry. You're not saying you're anti-minority, right? <laughs> the board of 17 supervisors, okay. well, both wise, the Democrats are on the minority. Who made the nomination on the last the one? Was it Cassie? Yeah. yeah. As long as the Democrats made the nomination, then fine. I have no problem no, with what you say. It was Dave. Dave the Republicans. There you go. The number five is the Democrats. Yes, but they made a poll, so they don't know. This is a, I thought you moved the Democrat. Oh. Dave moved their party. Oh, so we're good. Cassie, Cassie moved the Democrat. I seconded it. Right. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Then it's, everything is kosher. And Sue, and Sue, Nate, on both of them. So it's okay. Right. It's going to be a long day. <laughs> All favor say aye. Thanks, Dana, for helping us out. <laughs> you didn't ask for the opposed. <laughs> is there someone opposed? I am. Oh, I saw him and Sue both were opposed. <laughs> Very good, thank you. Okay, and the supplemental mortgage tax distribution. Moved by Dave, second by Sue Clary, Kathy Fedler, Dana Hogan. All favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. N is tentative budget for mental health. 
Um, number was on the wrong line, so we're just moving that within the budget. So I need a motion to move that. Moved by Kathy, seconded by Sue. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. I had a question. Did, sure. did him do the supplemental mortgage tax and the regular mortgage tax or just the supplemental? Oh, we'll I think it's the sticker together. The mortgage tax will come out at the board meeting. Yes, that's right. Will we hold it on then? Yes. Okay. Okay. O is interest fund transfer of revenue in the general fund to decrease. Uh, it was a revenue that was just missed, so. I've got it to decrease real property taxes unless somebody wants to decrease fund balance I, or unless there's something you want to spend money on. So that's up to you guys. I don't know if you want to come back to that or do that now according to what your ambition is. Is Any interest to move that or I'm okay. <laughs> who's gonna vote? Is there a second? Second by uh, Matt Hicks. Is there any discussion? All favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay. And P is a resolution adopting the budget for fiscal year twenty twenty two, making appropriations mm -hmm. for the conduct of county government. Anybody want to move that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, had trouble oh, I had trouble with an amendment to, to, to lower taxes, so I didn't know what you were thinking. <laughs> okay. So that one there, we're going to wait till we have further discussion. Where are we at now? Uh, coroner's position. The coroner's position contract puts in headwaters. We don't have that. <clears throat> oh. So there's no no action. We don't have the information yet. Will that go straight to the full board? Is that what we're? No, it'll it'll we'll wait. It'll wait. So we're good there. Okay. So the next discussion is OSA cars. And over the the weekend, Gina and Melissa were able to go to Auto Saver Ford and actually test drive. Uh, an electric Mustang Mach E car that is a hatchback, all wheel drive, with I guess everything that they thought they wanted for OFA. They delivered the meals on Monday. And so I want to put that out there because they're looking to go out to bid on the cars. So I I did a little day and a half job today. This Dana's gonna enjoy this. Dana, you gotta look up, Dana. It's show and tell time. I remember the time you did this where you brought something. I can't remember what it was, but you actually did a really good job. So this is from the heart of the county, from Gibson Hardware. And so I was short a gallon of gas in order to get my truck to the gas station to fill it up here a week ago. And so I stopped with my electric car to buy this in Hartford. But when I went to the pump to fill it up, I got a few strange looks with my electric car pulled up to the pump. Uh, it's only one and a quarter gallon. So one and a quarter gallon in Hartford, this is equivalent to five dollars. So when you're filling your tank, think every five dollars, this is all you get. So Ryan. what would that actually give you when you drive your car? So I gotta figure the best vehicle we may own might get you 40 miles here. It was my guess. I don't know if anybody agrees with that, but that's what I'm guessing. This represents five dollars. The car I actually drive would give me 200. So that's what we've talked about the whole time. But you guys always want to visualize things. This is so you can visualize that. And we're going to talk a lot about money today. I hope. 
I hope that's where this discussion is going to end up going eventually. And when we talk about savings, this is the most savings thing I've found in eternity here. And we've just kicked the can down the road every time, but I think everybody cares. And if you think about what this costs, uh, a 60 cent increase per hour on somebody's salary on this fuel bill would give them about $20 in their check for the week and their increase in fuel costs just to come to work has increased that much. So I just want to tie all those things together because this was the one opportunity we had to save in every department across all boards where no department would have been hurt to help another department. And so that's where I want to start. And I'm going to hand it over to Carpool. And we're going to go on with, well, Dana. Dana has a question first. So go ahead, Dana. Brian, does Gibson Hardware also sm sell small generators that you can keep in the trunk of the car when the battery wears out that you can run the gasoline generator to recharge your car? And again, it comes that back. Called, we live in the North was, Country. And when you start to heat this car, your mileage goes way down. And no. I don't think it's the budget officer's place to try to set policy in the county. You are trying to set policy through the budget for your beloved electric cars. And I think that is wrong. I think Gina should be allowed to set whatever parameters she needs, much like social services, when they wanted an all wheel drive, high ground clearance, and we put it out to bid, see what comes back. Not putting in the bid, it must be an electric car. I think that is wrong. Maybe in 2035, you might do that, but not today. I think you're trying to set policy and I'm opposed to that. And I'm going to vote no. This not your place as budget officer to try to establish policy through the budget. I totally agree with you, and thank you for giving me that segue, because I don't want to set policy. My whole initiative here is how the county can save money. That's where I'm at, and Gina was the one that is on board for this. So that's why Gina's here today, and that's why Deb is here today. And that's why Gina went and tried the car and actually went the route. So thank you for getting me out of that because that's not where I want to be. <laughs> so I appreciate that, Dana. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Deb. Oops. Um, so uh, we were tasked with going to see what was on the lot so that we could find um, something to provide for the OFA. Uh, we looked into the electric cars and we looked into a number of different gasoline cars. We found that there's nothing on the lots at the moment and we don't, ex for the gas powered vehicles, we are told that there are electric vehicles that we, that they can get in a, a quick way. So I'm, I'm not sure how long it will be before we can get gas models, but we're told probably six to eight months. Did you wanna know anything else? Any questions from anyone? Thanks. So the last time Gina was here uh, during the uh, HHS, I thought she was gonna get together with Deb and they were gonna decide what they wanted to look at. Then then <clears throat> back to Jay's committee, which is DPW, who would then discuss what to put out the bid and what the bids are going to be and follow that process. Is that process still going to be followed? Or we, we just get all that now and everything to find. I have no idea. You you were the one that wanted them to in that committee meeting because I was there. You were the one that said we needed to find whatever we could get as quickly as we could get it. I have no idea where it was going or how it was going. No, I said they just, came, they just came back. In fact, it should say perhaps 30 days availability. I think yes. that, that's something different than what you just said. So don't tell me I said something I didn't say. Well, okay, it's different. But the, no, but that's how we got here was they yes, came so about the the process. I didn't bring it here. Bring that now and, and just jump right into this. Matt, I did not bring Matt, it here. Matt, I you thought, need to stop arguing because we can't hear you when you argue over each other. 
One of you has to talk at a time, not back and forth. That's fair. No, the only reason it's here is because they wanted to go out to bid. I, and I thought they needed permission to bid. I have no idea. Permission from the DPW committee, which is where it's always gone for. Yeah. So you want to wait another 30 days? That's all I'm asking. I'm asking, are we following the process that we've always followed? Or are we just throwing that aside now and running through your committee what you want? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I didn't bring it to the committee. How did it get here? I don't know. It's not it's your agenda. Right? Your committee's not I, your didn't, agenda. I didn't ask it to come here. So I don't know why you want to portray that I did. A lot of stuff ends up on my agenda that I don't ask to bring here. Health and Human Services moved it to finance. That's what I thought. I thought to do what? Uh, well, first it says the superintendent will look into bid options to move forward quicker. She stated once they reach a conclusion on the vehicle research, what is out there and available and what our options are, they can bring it forward to the November Finance Committee meeting. Motion to move OFA request to purchase vehicles to the Finance Committee. Seconded and adopted. Okay. So we are gonna. I thought how it got here, here, but I I wasn't gonna argue because I really didn't know, but because I didn't bring it here. Dave. Two questions. I thought you were also you had mentioned we have five years also. And the third thing, the other thing I have in consideration is is cars are flying off the lot. Why aren't people buying Mustangs? Why are they left on the lot? What's wrong with them? I just asked a question. All the cars are flying off the lot. Why are the Mustangs not selling? They're, well, the only thing I can tell you, none of them were there that were there a month ago. So they're selling because it's a whole different crop to <laughs> So I've driven the Mustang. I've tested it out. And I talked to the dealer about it. As I recall, and I don't remember the exact numbers, the previous bid was for Equinoxes or something. And those bids were somewhere in the low 20s. The Mustang I drove was mid-40s. So you're basically paying twice as much. So you're saving five bucks, Brian, but you're paying 20 grand more. more. We're paying now, federal money. Kathy said not to talk about Okay, we'll wait till you finish. Thank you. And I'll correct it. So you're going to save a lot of gas to save up that 20 grand. What Gina said before was she's got 11 vehicles. They're all in pretty old and tough shape. She wants to get as many as she can for the money that she has. So I would think it would be smarter to get eight of the Equinoxes as opposed to four mm -hmm. of the Mustang. That would serve her better and take a long time to pay off that all additional expense in saving in gas for those electric cars. So I think it's a mistake. Okay. So I will just answer it with this. They can get these now. The Equinoxes, you're going to be six to eight months. That's, that's what they determined. That's what they told me. So that's all I can go by. You wanted them sooner. That's the only reason it's here. Because that's what they said they could get. If it hasn't been out to bid, you don't know when they can be available. If the bid specs say that it's within 30 days, you might find a dealer that can come through within 30 days. You don't know until you ask. That's why they're here to bid. Exactly. So why don't we bid both? They're going to. I believe. I believe. They're oh, going to bid already decided that. This has already been decided. No, I, I'm saying I think they're going to bid everything. I don't know what they're going to do. You haven't approved the thing yet, but I'm, I'm happy to bid everything. I, I've got no skin in this game. I, I've, I've come away from that. I'm not fighting over it anymore. You guys don't want to save money. You don't want to save money. That's the bottom line. And remember, this money is federal money. There's not one local taxpayer dollar in that unless they paid it into their federal income tax. So I don't know where you want to go or what you want to do, but if you were in a hurry, I'm just saying this is an avenue. They said they've got them. They can get them. They have lots all over New England. I don't know if they'd even get the lowest bid. I have no idea. I'm just telling you where it's at. And we're just looking to bid because it came here through human services, not through me. So do you want to bid or do you just want to forget about it? That, yeah, that's, that's my question. Um, yes, the, I guess what I'm not clear about is this federal money if we were to order uh, cars and they didn't show up for eight months, it's the worst case scenario that's being stated for a normal gas engine car. The money's still there for that, right? If you, yeah, it's, it's in the 2022 budget. Well, the issue is here 
is like Matt says, if you get eight new cars versus four new cars, and we, but we have to wait eight months or maybe five months, maybe four months, that's still taxpayers' dollars going to be saved because you're only going to get four with the federal money, and then we're going to have to buy four next year. We're, we're saving taxpayers' money by uh, doing this. So I, I don't think that the urgency outweighs the savings. I don't either. That's why I want to bid off. <laughs> right. Yes. The black corner over here, by the way. It is. Okay. Um, I can't see my little turn. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, a couple of things. First of all, it did start in human services, and we talked about it on human services because, because of the safety and the fact that they were delivering meals and the urgency was due to the fact that, you know, the cars are older, they have become a problem, and we made the motion to move it to time. I would like to hear back from Gina, because Gina runs this operation. She has to be able to share with us what her needs are. And we have to trust her enough to know that she knows what she's talking about. So, Gina, you know, I would like to hear from you. We've heard from Deb. We asked you two to go and figure this out with Carpool and with OFA. Sure. Thank you. Um, so I can share with you that we did use the electric Mach E car on one of our home delivered mail routes. Uh, the dealership was kind enough to lend us the use of the vehicle for a full day. So this past Monday, uh, I picked the car up from the dealership, um, brought it to Burgoyne, had all the drivers test it out, uh, and then proceeded to go on a route with one of my full-time drivers driving the vehicle itself. I can share with you that as far as this particular car, it functionally met our needs. It had a hatchback. We were able to load all of our equipment, which included um, a couple of extra equipment items like bags and heated bags and coolers for our meal site, as well as for the Skingsboro Harbor location. Based on the start of the battery, it was 100% charged when I left the dealership. So leaving Comstock, coming to Burgoyne Avenue, um, and then going on the Whitehall meal delivery route, then going back to Burgoyne, and then back to the dealership. So overall, we did about 110 miles. The battery was 100% charged when we left. When we, when I returned the vehicle at the end of the day, after the 110 miles, the battery was at 41%. So that kind of gave us an approximate, um, ex, you know, experience in terms of how this vehicle would adequately be worked out uh, in delivering meals. I can share with you too that it was um, kind of a chilly day, so we had the temperature. Uh, on set at about 73 degrees, which again uses that that battery. Um, to add, we used a heated bag, which is basically uh, plugged into the 12 volt uh, charger, which again uses the same battery that operates the vehicle. So uh, at this particular time, I can share with you um, that you know the physical structure, the ground clearance, the keyless entry. Um, and you know the hatchback feature, which I will say moving forward, I prefer hatchback versus having a trunk uh, like the past Ford Focuses. Um, definitely met our needs. So at this particular time, you know, just the structure of the car would would work. Um, it's just a matter of you know deciding the county deciding if we're moving towards uh, a couple of electric um, or going all gas or going hybrid. Question for Gina. Sure. Yeah, go ahead. Gina, your specs, do you particularly care what's under the hood? What propels the car? Does that meet any of your requirements, whether it's gas, hybrid, or electric? Do you like the hatchback, high ground clearance, all wheel drive? Does it matter to you what's under the hood? Um, at this particular time, it, it wouldn't matter. We're looking again for vehicles. I have had the conversation with others that this funding that we have received is a one-time funding. 
that we'll that we'll be getting. So the ability for us to replace or buy vehicles in the future is questionable. Um, I would like to get as many vehicles as I possibly can with this funding, um, just based on you know the information that we received from DPW on the condition of the current fleet. So you know the delivery for a gas vehicle six to eight months out. Do you have cars that are going to fail? Before then, are they on such last legs that there's this urgency to get something right now? I don't think you'd be getting something right now if this money wasn't available. Um, so is there truly an urgency in your department to go all electric? And also, I've been hearing through the grapevine that the budget officer has been a little bit relentless in lobbying you towards electric. He's saying now he doesn't have any skin in the game. It's trying, you know, it's whatever, but I've been hearing that he has been strongly lobbying you for electric when you just said you don't particularly care what's under the hood. So going back to the condition of the current fleet, most certainly that we, that's not our, that's not my area expertise to know if a vehicle, you know, I don't want to use the word safe because I believe that every vehicle that DPW gives to us is safe and road and most certainly worthy of, of um, doing our meal roads. So um, the question in regards to the condition of the vehicles and, you know, whether or not they're going to last, I, I personally can't answer that. That would be something that I would um, ask that Deb Donahue and her team of expertise would, would be able to share more information on. In terms of going all electric, um, I would question going all electric. I most certainly would be open to trying uh, a couple of electric vehicles, but going all electric, um, you know, I'm not sure if that, if we're there yet, as far as the county, that most certainly would be a question that, again, I would have to work with Deb and her team because there's other factors that are involved in that, in that aspect of going electric. All right. The temperature outside when you test drove the car, it says a little chilly, 55 degrees, maybe 50 degrees. It certainly yeah, wasn't, it was this certainly wasn't zero degrees. Yeah. Um, it was Monday and I did take several screen um, pictures of the dashboard. So there was one picture that did have the outside temperature. And I'm, I'm sorry, I, don't, I can't find it at this time, but I would say it's this past Monday. It was pretty comparable to probably the condition of the weather today. I think the real test is if it's zero, really, really cold. And you're getting into a, a car that is all cold steel. Everything is cold inside. My fear is that if we go electric, then very soon we're going to have to have a place to heat them so that they're preheated in the wintertime because we're gonna find that you make a run out from Burgoyne up to Whitehall and you're gonna be on zero battery left because the heater's been running, the windshield wiper's been running, not necessarily the lights, they're probably LED, probably don't draw hardly anything at all. Um, but you know, a regular gasoline car, you use the waste heat, which is generated by the internal combustion to heat the cabin. That's where the heat comes from. Electric car, you have to use all the batteries. And another thing is, can anybody tell me where, when you get done with electric car, where those batteries go? Are they recycled? Do they go into a landfill? Are they now going to be hazardous and that's going to be another big problem? I don't think they've been around long enough for people to recycle an electric car. Thank you. Yeah, there's no. Federal money we're talking about. This just covers the purchase. Of the cars, or does it cover anything else that goes with them? As in charging stations and all this that we're going to have to do, is that going to come from taxpayers or federal money? I don't know if Gino wants to respond, but the cost of hardware, if you had two stations, you're talking two to four thousand dollars to just put them in that would be privately, you know, just for OFA if that's what they wanted to do. That That's the cheapest way out and the easiest way out to keep the public from charging there. Uh, I would just think that would be the smart thing if, the, if you were gonna go that route, but that's just me, that's my opinion. Um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't. I surely wouldn't want to have the public charging where our Meals on Wheels cars <laughs> need to be, you know, uh, charged. And going back to Dana Ham's question or comment, Dana was very good. Dana, I'll tell you from my experience, the worst thing on the electric is running the windshield wipers. I don't know why, but that seems to bother me the most on my mileage. But what's nice with the electric is when they're plugged in, like if they come to work, they have to wait for the meals to come over anyway, the car would be totally heated before they ever unplugged the car. That's, that's kind of the sweet part of it, is it doesn't take any mileage away from the car. The car's heated before they ever leave, and it does, it's very quick. It doesn't take very long at all to heat the inside of the cab. And so very, very good point you brought up, and I appreciate that. Dave O'Brien. So the question on the table is, do we want, do we want to authorize and go for bids? What would the specs for those bids be? Deb Donahue was the one going to answer that. <laughs> So we were tasked with finding out what we could get quickly. Um, I think that we could not get gas vehicles quickly, but I think I, I was under the impression you guys would decide what you wanted to do and we would take it from there. If you want us to bid for all electric, all gas, hybrid, all three of them, we can do whatever, um, whatever you guys would like us to do. Maybe that would give us a better idea of exactly when a car would be available, but I think there's so much uncertainty out there that I don't think that they would bid if we gave them a 30 day uh, period where they had to give us a car. And then if they didn't come up with the car in the 30 days, I'm not sure what happens after that. You know, we can't, we can't get the car if they don't give it to us. So we've heard right? ground clearance, she wants a hatchback, she wants all-wheel drive, doesn't care what was powered by. So why are we so concentrated on time versus putting a bid out there for six months, to delivery in six months or eight months? Get a time frame, look at all three, and then make a decision where we want to go. When do these federal dollars go away? They don't. They don't, okay. There's, it's not... It's not like a, a pool of money that, that dissolves. No, no. Mean, they, it would only be if they change the rules. Okay. It's not forever money. There's a dead date. There's a, I'm sure there's a dead date, but there's also rules. It's like it's under the COVID thing. It's the only reason she can buy cars with it. So if COVID were to end, that those rules may even change. We don't know. The, the award comes with a spend by date. It has an expiration. Yeah. Does Gina, do you have an a end date for us? So right now, under the emergency declaration, we're able to use these federal funds in a manner that we see fit. At any point when that emergency declaration ends, then we, we won't have the opportunity to make a purchase on vehicles. Then I'll have to go back to um, the funding comes in at different uh, assignments. So for instance, it could go back to where I just put it towards food it could go back to where I just put it towards transportation. Um, it, it's kind of divided up in different um, assignments of where it would go. So right now we do have the luxury. Uh, I don't think any of us know when the emergency declaration will end. So at this particular time, you know, I would say that there is some urgency probably in the next six months or so, or a few months to, to spend this money if we're going to use it on vehicles. Right. Yeah. Um, we're talking the federal emergency declaration, right? Yep. I, Correct. I don't foresee it lasting past the first quarter of next year, so I think there is a time crunch here to, I don't, I don't think 30 days, but, you know, 90 days, you know, delivery. You know, it's got to be, you know, don't want to don't wanna risk, you know, not being able to take advantage of this because we're waiting too long, waiting six to eight months. Is that a compromise? Three months, four months? Be gone a year ago. We normally don't do it, but sometimes you change due to circumstances. We normally wait until delivery to pay for something, I believe. Could we put a bid out, accept the bid, put the payment towards it, anticipating delivery? 
That way the money will have been spent during the emergency period. I'm afraid it doesn't work that way in procurement. I don't think we're allowed to do that. Why not? I think we have because it's just not legal. You you can because you could give somebody money just because you said you're gonna buy something from them and that would really be frowned upon. But it's our procurement policy, correct? We are allowed to waive our own policy. I don't think it's a law, local law, Washington County local law. Maybe it is, but we are the lawmakers. It's our policy. We can waive our policies and our local laws, actually. No, I don't know that you can give away federal money to somebody in anticipation of buying something. That's what I don't think, but I have no idea. Can you're, not, be you're not giving it away. You're Absolutely. purchasing something. Absolutely against that concept, 100%. In the world of business, how would you even get that money back if they can't get it? I, I'm 100% against that idea whatsoever. I mean, think about it. You worry about the taxpayer dollar, where it's going to go here or there. And seriously, you would spend potential money that the taxpayer would have to make up if it didn't come through. I am 100% against this all the well, way. Why? Never pay for anything until it's in, on delivery. Well, that's why I said this is an exceptional circumstance. You don't normally do it, but a large reputable dealer, are they going to go out of business tomorrow? I'm sure there's lots of things that we purchase and then the vendor sends it to us once they receive payment. I bet there's lots of things. For this amount of dollars, I would no. I would be 100% against this so we cancel each other out, Dane and the other 15 can fight it out, but I'm 100% well, against paying for anything before I have it. For well, that 50, amount of money. I'm 50% against it myself, so, but worth a discussion. <laughs> no, no, no. You know, when your funders honor the purchase order, is it could have been a fund by the county, even if the check hadn't been written yet? Uh, I'm sorry, Ella, I'm not sure if I'm hearing you correctly. I'm sorry. So, a lot of the funding agencies will look at the purchase order. As the county's commitment of funds. So if we have a, a purchase order issued, a lot of times that's enough to lock in the funding for you. This uh, may work that I, way. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, of that because we haven't really been in that situation, but I can most certainly look into it. Because once, once you have that purchase order cut, the county is then, you know, that those funds are encumbered and the county is committed to that purchase. A lot of times the funders will actually honor that purchase order. I'll seek the answer to that question now. What else can this money be used for? Gina? At this particular time, we do have, uh, so that pool of money, we do have it allocated in different areas. Um, for instance, we are looking to buy some equipment for the home delivered meals program that we desperately need. Um, the vehicles was the big piece. I think under the, so basically right now under the declaration, we can use it as we see fit. So there's a huge advantage to it. So again, going back to it, once that emergency declaration ends, um, then we'll have to go down through the different funding streams. So the different funding streams could be Again, just throwing it out there vaguely, transportation, um, home delivered meals, the congregate sites, uh, the, um, I'm not sure about the personnel piece, about salary piece, that hasn't been something that I dug deep into on this. Um, right now, the state is really saying, hey, counties, you know, where do you see a need to use these funds? So we're, we're kind of at the mercy of um, the flexibility piece at this point. So follow up on that, Gina, you're saying that those other things you were looking at buying, are those things we'll still have to purchase? If you're speaking about the heated bags, yes. Yep, those are in the 2022 budget. So in the beginning of the year, we'll seek out um, from vendors prices on the equipment that we would need. Hicks, I'll make a motion. We put out up to eight vehicles of the same spec that Deb Donahue did before. I believe they end up being Chevy Equinoxes. 
Um, no trailblazers. Our trailblazers. Uh, we use the same specs as we sent out before, uh, with a suggestion of putting in there for um, looking for a maximum 120 day delivery. Any discussion? Everybody good with that? All in favor say aye. 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 Good. Very good. Okay. Is Larry ready? I think that's where we're at. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Point of order on this or question is where is this? Going back to finance, or is it going to go to public works? When you can go out to bid? <laughs> well, no, actually, the bids come back. Are they coming back to finance, or are they coming back to public works for public their works review? Normally, right? Usually, public works. Well, I mean, it's good to know right now, yeah. so that it's in the. Well, it came from human services, so I don't know where it's going back to. Well, public works, it just goes for carpool, I think. That's where I would say. Well, let's through. get it cleared up now. So. That's day. Yeah. Well, are they they're carpool cars, right? Yes. So carpool go through DPW. Because they handle the fleet, yeah. Right. So we we'll go through DPW. Okay. Good. It only came here because human services are sent here. I'm glad I'm feeling the love today. <laughs> We're just getting started. Okay, so you're all set with me. We're going to put out the bid we put out before with a hundred day max, hundred twenty day max delivery, and then we'll bring it to DPW. Excellent. All right. Perfect. Thanks, Doug. I, I think this motion should be amended. Maybe it's too late, but 180 days. I think it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that it will fail if you say 120 days. I'd like to have a little additional. 180, 180 days. days, the money price fails is what? Right. That's the concern is that the money fails in 180 days. No, but as Al said, if there's a purchase order put out there, that, that, might, that would probably work. 
that go kind of a little bit like my idea of pay for now that purchase order kind of does it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you ever came up with that idea, but that was a very interesting one coming from you. Is <laughs> Larry on? Okay. Okay, so we need a motion to go into executive session union negotiations. I'll let Roger tell you what those are. Collective negotiations under the table now. Okay, so I need a motion. Looks like Cassie. Second. Nobody wants to go into executive session to talk about you and that. James Griffith. Okay, all in favor say aye. Opposed? Gary. 